Today we're getting into the latest Tesla news, including why you may want to wait on buying a particular Tesla, Cybertruck production ramping, Tesla's new huge supercharger, and more, so let's get into it. First up today, we have an update on Tesla's supercharger concept that could represent the future of EV charging. Tesla's constant stream of supercharger construction is undeniably a leading factor for their top spot as the best-selling EV maker. Since opening their first supercharger back in 2012, Tesla has gone on to install over 50,000 stalls worldwide. That's a jaw-dropping number, and the increasing availability of charging infrastructure is what has given many customers the confidence to buy their first EV. As more and more Teslas are purchased every day, and now other EV manufacturers are starting to access the supercharger network, we're going to need more chargers to keep up. While supercharging is a great asset for long-distance EV trips, they still are not quite as ubiquitous as the nation's over 150,000 gas stations. Superchargers can sometimes fill up, and when you have to wait half an hour for a charge, that does create an issue. Of course, the difference when comparing those numbers apples to apples is that you can charge at home for a lot of customers, but for those customers that can't, more chargers will be necessary, and sometimes you may have to wait. That's where Tesla's new supercharger station design comes in. Tesla has submitted plans for a new supercharger station in Kern County, California, California, near the intersection of the 5 and 45 freeways, and it will be the biggest they've ever made. It's not too far from their Kettleman City Supercharger, which was previously their largest station. According to the construction permits, this new station will have over 160 stalls and 16 pull-through stalls. As Tesla continues rolling out their Cybertruck and other brands ship and unveil their new electric pickups, then the number of EVs towing large loads is going to increase. These pull-through stalls will be very handy for any towing vehicles, and they can just pull in and out without needing to unhook anything. This charging station will also be powered by its own microgrid of batteries and solar power that should do a lot to reduce the cost of charging. Above each parking stall will be a solar canopy, providing clean energy to the station. Then down the line, we may have more to look forward to with this station. In the front and middle of the plans for the complex, we can see a plot of land labeled Future Development Area. This land could be used for any number of things, including energy storage, but it might also be a sign Tesla is planning for something else. Tesla has a reputation of designing weird and fun attractions for their superchargers, ranging from a lounge with automated concessions to an actual swimming pool in Germany. That one wasn't the nicest, though. I wouldn't be surprised if, for their largest supercharger station in the world, they also add amenities to accommodate the traffic that will surely come to it. We'll have to look out for updates there, but in the meantime, their drive-in theater-inspired supercharger is expected to open pretty soon, and construction is well underway. I kind of expected this thing not to come online, so I'm very excited to see construction actually progressing here. Next up today, the Model 3 is in a very peculiar situation. The refresh has just launched in the US, and it really is a huge improvement on the last version in ways that count. I've been driving it for about two weeks now, and I got back into my 2022 Model Y and couldn't believe the difference. The Model 3 is smoother, rides better, and has far less road noise compared to the Model Y. It gets me excited for the Model Y refresh that should be coming in the pipeline. But for now, Tesla just raised the Model 3's price in the US again. The main increase comes to the long-range version, which is up another $250 after already being increased a total of $1,500 in recent weeks. Tesla's website now is distinguishing the new model by calling it the re-engineered Model 3, with leases starting at $329 per month. Standard range has stayed the same price, but long range is up to $47,740, and the crazy thing is that doesn't qualify for any tax credits. In my area at least, Tesla has updated the Model Y website to only allow you to see cars currently available, rather than customizing them, but the long range Model Y in inventory starts at $45,590. That's $2,150 cheaper than the equivalent Model 3, and this is the first time we've ever seen this from Tesla. Typically, the Model Y is more expensive, since it's a larger version of the Model 3, but it's even more extreme with the tax credit. The Model Y qualifies, so you could get this Model Y for $38,090 if you qualify, or get the similar long-range Model 3 for $47,740. That's $9,650 more for a Model 3 over a Model Y if you qualify for the tax credit. So this time, it appears that Tesla is trying to drive demand for the Model Y by lowering prices in inventory, but also by raising the price of the Model 3. On top of that $250 price increase, the Model 3's white interior is now a $1,500 upgrade as opposed to the previous $1,000. So if you were going long range with white interior, that's up $750. Not too crazy, but noticeable. This seems to possibly relate to a few things. Tesla has more production capacity for the Model Y and needs to get those selling. The Model 3 is likely behind as they are relaunching the re-engineered version, so they also want to slow orders there if they can and obviously drive them to the Model Y. Then it's likely that customers are somewhat waiting for a Model Y refresh, so they need to incentivize them once again to buy the current version. 
As a customer simply looking at cost and functionality, the Model Y does make a lot of sense right now. So it does lead to the idea that Tesla may be in a transition period for the Model 3. Yes, it's great and you can buy it today, but it's far more expensive than the Model Y if you qualify for a tax credit. Once production is ramped again though, we could see Tesla try to balance things out again and work to source the batteries so the Model 3 qualifies. Never before have we seen that car cost more than the Model Y, so it's a very interesting time. I think that in time, we could end up seeing Tesla ramp Model 3 production, lower pricing, and make it eligible for the tax credit once again. For patient customers, it could mean that waiting is a great idea, and you'll get a car that is further down the line in production as they work out any kinks or issues there at their Fremont factory. But what do you think? Does this make sense? Or is Tesla simply raising the price due to the new features? Leave a comment below to let me know your thoughts. Next up today, Tesla has just officially opened orders for the new third generation Powerwall, and it has some truly crazy stats behind it. Tesla started their first installations of the Powerwall 3 late last year, but the product was only made available to select customers. Now, however, they have just started taking orders for this updated Powerwall in the US. It features an 11.5 kilowatt power backup with a fully integrated solar inverter, DC coupled battery expansion units for easier install, a more durable exterior, a heat mode for use in extreme weather, and participation in virtual power plant to sell back power to the grid during peak hours. In previous iterations of this product, most installations required the usage of more than one power wall. That wasn't so much to do with the battery's power capacity, but rather its output. Put simply, older generations didn't have the power output capacity to power an entire house very effectively. In addition to its greatly increased power capacity up to 11.5 kilowatts from the previous seven, the Powerwall 3 also features a greatly improved peak power output. Elon Musk explained, what matters most about Powerwall 3 is that it can handle peak power of around 30 kilowatts, which is enough to handle dryers and air conditioners. This means that a single Powerwall is now enough for most homes. That's a truly exciting home battery solution and does a lot to make this an attractive option for most homes. The Powerwall 3 is available for sale at $8,400, but that does not include any local incentives that your city or state may have or the added price of installation. However, if you use my referral code linked below, you can get an additional $500 off the purchase price. This new generation of Powerwalls is a big step in quality and performance for this product, and I'm very excited to see customers able to get their hands on it now. Next up today, the Cybertruck continues to show its reliability and versatility in more videos and stories as more customers get their hands on this truck. A while ago, a video went somewhat viral of someone having to be rescued after getting stuck in a snowbank. Cybertruck detractors had a field day with this one, claiming it was definitive proof of this truck's poor performance. While the Cybertruck definitely still has some software-related off-roading issues, the driver has just as much of a part to play in getting stuck like this. This is shown quite clearly in a new video that has just been posted online that turns the tables quite a bit for these vehicles. In this video, we see almost an inverse of the last video, a Cybertruck pulling out an F-150 stuck in the snow. Off-roading in any type of vehicle can be very tough, and it requires a wide array of skills to handle successfully. Anyone in any vehicle can easily get stuck in the snow, and this time it was the Cybertruck that came to the rescue. Another video has come out of a Cybertruck in a snowy setting, and it's performing exceptionally well. Here we can see it climbing this steep snowy hill like it's nothing. This driver is a much more experienced off-roader, and his Cybertruck is equipped with proper tires for the snow. This goes to show that while Tesla still has room for improvement with this truck, like with the current lack of differential locks for off-roading, it is much more capable than some make it out to be. For a lot of Cybertruck owners, this may be their first time owning an off-roading vehicle, and that could lead to a lot of unprepared drivers getting stuck like this. If you plan on taking your truck into rough terrain, make sure you research it ahead of time and make the preparations to handle it effectively. Besides off-roading, there are tons of ways that you can enjoy the Cybertruck in the great outdoors. One owner has gotten a lot of use out of his truck by taking it camping, and it excelled there. He used the truck's outlets to power a griddle to make meals, charge his devices, and even played some video games with Starlink internet. The spacious bed was able to accommodate all of his camping gear, and he slept in a truck tent inside it. He saw minimal power drain from all this activity, even after turning on the truck's camp mode overnight to run heat for his dog. Going camping in a Cybertruck sounds like a great way to experience this truck's full potential, and I'm excited to learn more about it. If you are anxiously awaiting the delivery of your Cybertruck, then you will be happy to hear that its production is ramping up quite nicely. YouTuber Brad Sloan posted drone flyover footage of Giga Texas last week, and here we can see 32 finished Cybertrucks parked in the outbound lot. A few days later, he posted a follow-up video where we can see over 50 parked in lots across the facility. A few days after that, Giga Texas had stacked up to 106 Cybertrucks. And then from there, it was quickly up to 140 Cybertrucks. Very impressive. 
That increased production is directly translating to increased deliveries. One customer visited a Tesla center in Florida and saw nine Cybertrucks there ready for delivery. Their pace has been accelerating pretty consistently since production began a few months ago, and it will surely continue to grow. I'm curious to see how many Tesla will eventually be able to produce in a day. That factory is producing at least 5,000 Model Ys per week as of last year, and while the Cybertruck is clearly a more niche vehicle, it has a lot of room to expand production there. If you weren't one of the initial reservation holders, you may be a bit dismayed by how long it could take to finally receive your long-awaited Cybertruck. You may even be willing to pay the upgrade for the Foundation Series, but just aren't in line. There are over a million customers currently waiting in line for this truck, and it could take Tesla years to clear that backlog. Well, Tesla briefly offered a way to jump the line on reservations, but it will come at a cost. If you have 30,000 referral credits built up, you can use those points to become a priority for delivery. Tesla says, quote, be invited to configure and take delivery of your Foundation Series all-wheel drive or cyber beast within 45 days of redemption. Clearly, there was a lot of interest in this because it sold out within the first day. Tesla does say that interested customers should check back later because this promotion will be running in the next few weeks and months. In addition, Tesla has just announced another Cybertruck sweepstakes as a referral points prize. This is the second Cybertruck raffle that Tesla has announced since the truck's release, with the first winner claiming their all-wheel drive variant just a few days ago. If you live in the US, you can redeem 1,000 referral points for a chance to win a Foundation Series Cybertruck for free, no previous reservation necessary. The winner will have the choice between an all-wheel drive and Cyber Beast variant when they are selected in April. If you find yourself too impatient to wait for production to increase and don't want to spend 30,000 referral points, you may be tempted to look for one second hand though. While the Cybertruck already costs a lot more than its early estimated cost, used trucks are being listed at astronomical prices. An all-wheel drive Cybertruck was listed for sale on CarGuru for a whopping $250,000. That price seemed insane, but then the very next day it had been listed as sold. Tesla notoriously included a clause in this truck's sale contract that essentially forbid reselling within the first year of delivery. Anyone caught selling their Cybertruck to a third party could face a fine up to $50,000. I'm curious to know if this seller managed to find a way around that clause. Some seem to have found a loophole by leasing their trucks to others and then selling the truck for a nominal fee after the clause has expired. While we don't know when or if Tesla has plans to eventually bring the Cybertruck to other markets, they are continuing this truck's world tour of sorts. Recently, this truck made an appearance at the Canadian International Auto Show, and it drew some pretty big crowds there. Some first-hand accounts even claimed that the Cybertruck was the most popular vehicle on display at the show, and it makes sense. The Cybertruck is one of the most unique vehicles on the road right now, and people are desperate to get a glimpse of it. While the Cybertruck should be coming to Canada, it will probably be a while before Tesla even considers selling this truck in other countries. If they do decide to expand, however, the demand should be there if they can legally get it there. This truck has been turning heads all across China and Japan as they show it off there, and rumors suggest it could be going on tour in Europe next. I'm very curious to see this truck continue to get into more customer hands so that we can see firsthand how other people will use it in the wild. Last up today, some updates from other automakers. Over at Rivian, a number of things are in the works. The R2 is on the way, but they are also out in the wild testing with refreshed versions of the R1S and R1T. According to Dirty Tesla, who took these photos of the R1T, the front headlights were covered up aside from circles. This could be an altered future truck in a different size, but many think it's just a slight refresh of the current R1T. This comes after RJ Scaringe gave an interview with Forbes and said Rivian will soon release a high-powered new computing system for future Rivians with the latest capabilities to their automated highway driving technology, Driver Plus. That could be what they are testing out here. Ahead of its March 7th unveil event, some keen-eyed enthusiasts have just gotten our first look at the upcoming Rivian R2. The R2 was spotted out filming in downtown LA last week, and someone was able to snag a pretty good photo of it from a distance. Here we can see it parked next to the R1S, and this side-by-side -side photo does a great job showing its new changes. First and most obviously is its new size. It looks quite a bit smaller than the R1S with significantly shorter rear quarter panels. Another small change is that the charge port on the R2 has been moved from the driver's side to the passenger side. This might seem like an arbitrary change, but some have noted that this could make it easier for charger-equipped street parking spots. Among those other changes, this new vehicle features fewer chrome accents, slightly smaller headlights, and an all-new wheel design. I can't wait to learn more about the R2 at their upcoming unveil event and to see what other things will come with this vehicle. If they can successfully keep to their $40,000 to $50,000 pricing goal without sacrificing their level of quality, then the R2 will definitely be a major contender against Tesla. 
As for current products, Rivian has just announced some exciting new battery options for their R1T and R1S vehicles. Up until now, Rivian has only offered three battery options for their R1 vehicles, the 270 mile standard range, 352 mile large pack, and 400 mile max pack. Some battery packs were only available for certain powertrain configurations, like the standard pack only being an option for the dual motor all wheel drive version. Now this has changed and the really exciting new option is the newly announced standard plus battery pack. This new option is available on both dual motor variants as well and adds 45 miles of range to the standard battery pack. That brings the total mileage up to 315 miles of range for an additional $3,100 on the MSRP. This is an exciting option that may provide a nice range to price sweet spot for a lot of interested customers. Adding an additional 45 miles onto the standard pack for $3,100 is a pretty good value proposition, especially when you compare it to the next battery pack up. From standard plus to the large pack is only a gain of 37 miles, but that costs another $6,000. As it stands right now, you can get a dual motor standard plus R1T for $73,000 and an equivalent R1S for $78,000. Both of those configurations fall short of the EV tax credit cutoff of $80,000 for trucks and SUVs, so they are both eligible for $3,750 in federal tax incentives. Regarding competitors to the R1S, the new Kia EV9 continues rolling out across the US, and the company is being confronted by dealerships that are actively disobeying the brand's wishes. This electric SUV opened orders in the US back in November, and Kia made it very clear to their dealers that they didn't want them to mark this car up past MSRP. In a letter to dealers, Kia wrote, quote, the EV9 customer is an important new owner to the Kia brand, and price transparency will be paramount as part of their purchase experience. A few years ago, there were reports of Kia's first true electric electric car, the EV6, being marked up as much as $20,000, which probably prompted this move. It's very hard to sell competitive electric cars when prices are being artificially jacked up that high, especially when competing with the Model Y. Despite this plea, dealers are already adding some pretty significant markups to the EV9. Car Direct found several dealerships across the country that were adding up to $7,000 to the car's base MSRP of $54,900. Dealer markups like these are a big part of why people like shopping with companies like Tesla and Rivian. As much as Tesla likes to fiddle with pricing of their cars, they don't have any added fees or secret markups. The price that you see and order at is what you will pay. Paying an additional $7,000 for a car with nothing tangible in return is frustrating, and it's not surprising that customers are choosing different EV options as a result. Some legacy automakers are already exploring more direct to consumer sales options, and I'm curious to see how many others will follow suit. That's all the latest Tesla news for today, so in the meantime, if you wanna see the leaked features coming soon to Tesla's vehicles, you can check out that video linked up here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.